So we've seen some default grouping behaviors and how we can modify date groupings within your Excel pivot tables. Well, what about groups that we want to create that don't have default behaviors or default grouping levels? Let's take a look at how you can manually group content within your pivot tables. So back into our pivot table, we've currently got years along the left inside the row section. That's the ship date, and we're just displaying years. And we've got the sum of freight inside the value section. Well, let's take this a step further. Underneath each of the years, I want a reference to the employees. So if I hop into the field list, I'm going to grab the employee ID and I'll drag that down into the row section right below the shipped date field. I'll let go of that. So now I can quickly see, oh, employee number one is responsible for $78.40 within this section, within the blank section. Employee number two is responsible for $246.75 and so on. Right. Once again, we're laying our data out to tell a story. Right. In this case, we're saying for these different time periods, these employees are uh, are attached to this much for shipping for their orders. Right. Okay. Great. Well, what if these employees are then classified into different groupings? Right. Let's say employees number one, two, three, and four are part of. Uh, the A team. And then you've got employees five, six, and seven are part of the B team and so on. So I want to be able to group these. One of the benefits of groups, actually a couple of benefits. One, you get these super snazzy little plus and minus signs where you can collapse and expand the groups. But in combination with the ability to collapse and expand, we also get totals that go along with those groups. So now I want to be able to group these employees based on their team. All right, to do this, I'm going to select employee number one, two, three, and four. All four of these employees right here are part of the A team. Now, if I scroll down, you'll notice that employees one, two, three, and four, employees one, two, three, and four are being selected within each of the years. So with that in mind, with those selected, I'm gonna go back to the Pivot Table Analyze tab. On that tab, I'll go back into the groupings and there's an option for Group Selection. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a click. So this is gonna create actually several groups, but it created Group 1 and it's placed all one, two, three, and four within that group. Down below, you'll see that the remaining employees are all in their own independent groups. Okay. Well, we need to continue this going. So now employees five, six, oops, let's try that again. Five, six, seven, and eight are part of the B team. You know what, that would leave employee nine all alone. So let's do this. Let's get five, six, try out five, six, seven, get those. And then I'm gonna go ahead and group that. And then I'll get eight and nine and I'll group that selection. So now we got three groups in there. And once again, for each year, it's just recreated those groups for us. We don't have to go year to year to year. It's all the same row headings. Now, they're just called group one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Well, I want to change those names. So if I click into a cell that contains the group text, I can then go up to my formula bar and I can change the name there. So we'll just call this A team. I'll drop down below and I'm gonna call this B team and so on. Uh, this will be C team. And once again, it's gone through and done it inside of each of the groupings, each of the years for us. Very slick. So a little bit of manual grouping, but then we also get those grand totals for each of those subgroups within the years. What do you think? Pretty cool. You just select the, the, the row headings that you want to group, hop up to Pivot Table Analyze, and group the selection. And then you get to go in there and change the name of the group to reflect whatever group you'd like.
So teams, departments, regions, whatever it might be. So make sure you try this out. I did it with the employee ID. There's some other field in there you wanna try it with, feel free. Maybe there's customers and you wanna group them within specific regions, you know, whatever that might be. Ideally, you know, just thinking out loud here, if we had customer and I wanted to apply groups to that, my first thought might be, well, maybe we'll group it by the country. Hmm, that would be good. But you know what? We don't have country in this table. How do we do that? Well, you know what? Thankfully, later on, we're gonna talk about Excel's Power Query tool, and we'll see how to merge two different data sets, related data, to make a master list so we can get additional context to our data from another data set. So hold that thought. We'll be back to it later on inside this course. In the meantime, get in there and create some manual groupings.